Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin and death, and through the death and life of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first hymn that we are going to listen to, Think Lord Jesus, Think on Me. The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 to 12. Shout it aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cause of the yoke? to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food of the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked, to clothe them, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger of malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, 
Then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land, and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 51 Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak, and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I will bring it. And you do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. And um, our Matthew reading from Matthew's Gospel is by Anna. Good evening, everyone. Today's Bible reading is, going, is taken from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 6, and then 16 to 21. Giving to the needy. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets. To be honored by others, truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like. 
they have been pitched. So the last two pitched and they in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to, the, pray to your father who has you. And then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Then 16 to 21. When you are fast, when you fast, you know, look somber as they do Christy, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in form. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father, who is unseen, and your father, who sees what is done in secret, will, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on our earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in the steel. But store up for yourself tre treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you, man. <clears throat> and so, Ash Wednesday. It begins the 40 day period that's called Lent in the church. Now, of course, historically, these 40 days have been used by Christians to focus our hearts and our minds more acutely on God. Lent is a period of introspection. This means that we look more deeply at our own souls and our own shortcomings. The human nature has many particular tendencies, but two of them, two of them are relevant um, for our reflection at Lent. One of our tendencies as human beings is to, is to be self sufficient. That is, we are self-reliant to do things in our own power and in our own strength. In fact, if we cannot do something, if we cannot solve the problem, we feel inadequate, we feel unfulfilled. Sometimes we even feel worthless. That's how bad it gets at times when we become so self-sufficient and when our self-sufficiency runs out. This is because we put a lot of emphasis on our own abilities to accomplish the task. When we are unable to accomplish the said task, we feel like a failure. And yet the Bible tells us that because we are sinners, because we are flawed beings. We cannot accomplish what we would like in our own strength or by ourselves. We need help. Of course, we need help. We need the help of another person, a friend, a family member, or even a stranger. We are not self-sufficient despite what we tell ourselves. But more than anything else, we need God. We need the help of God, not only to live each day, but to endure each day into eternity. We need God in our lives to give our lives stability and strength for the journey. But the second tendency we have as human beings is not only to be self-sufficient, to, to want to do everything by ourselves, but we have a tendency to want to cover up our failures and our shortcomings. No one wants to show weakness. And so we do everything in our power to show strength rather than weakness. We do everything to minimize our shortcomings, to minimize our failures, 
and to maximize our strengths. And yet the Bible teaches us that it is in our weakness that we find the strength of God. And so during Lent, we are called to the very opposite of these two tendencies in human nature. We are called to abandon self-sufficiency and to seek God. And we are called to pay close attention to our failures, our weaknesses, and our shortcomings. The help of God comes to those who find themselves helpless and those who see themselves in need of a Savior. The strength of God comes to those who know they are weak and are failures in themselves. And so Lent invites us to look intently at our heart to see the sin, the shortcomings, and the failures that are there that we try to cover up every other time, to minimize every other time. Lent turns the spotlight on our shortcomings and says, this is who you really are. Turn to God for help. So during Lent, we use the disciplines that God has provided for us to grow deeper in Him. We use the discipline of prayer more than we would any other time. We use the discipline of fasting more than we would any other time. Now, of course, fasting can include giving up food, which is the original way of fasting. But of course, fasting involves giving up anything that is of value to us and using that time for reflection to draw nearer to God. And so we use the time for something useful and righteous rather than what we normally use it for. For example, if you normally spend hours watching Netflix, you give up Netflix and talking to the man, and you um, and you spend that time <laughs> reflecting, thinking about God, reading the scriptures, praying. But not only that, we give in, we give money. We, we give sacrificial to the church or to a charity that we, that we choose. We may also use the discipline of reading and meditating in God's Word to grow more and more in the knowledge of God. So the Lent calls us to use the disciplines wisely to become more like Jesus by disciplining ourselves to be more pious and to be more devoted to God. And that's important. But in the reading we heard from Isaiah, Isaiah warned the people that their fasting, their religious piety must not be an end in itself. See, God requires religious devotion fasting, prayer, meditating, worship. But when we use these things to manipulate God, then we are misusing the means of grace that God has provided for us. So for example, in Isaiah, the, the reading we heard, Isaiah 58 verse 3, the people said, Why have we fasted? And you have not seen it. Why have we humbled ourselves? And you have not noticed their speaking to God. You see, the people are asking, why have we been doing our devotions and you are not helping us? In other words, God, we 
we are fasting, we are praying, we are worshiping. But we are not doing this to get closer to you. We are doing this to get something from you. So they are using the disciplines of grace not to receive more of God, but to seek to manipulate God to do what they want Him to do for them. And for this reason, their attitude, their behavior, they did not change. And so Isaiah tells us that they fast and they do their devotion and they do their worship, but they get up and just carry on as if nothing happened. The disciplines, fasting, prayer, worship, they are meant to transform us and to make us more like God. But in this case, it is doing, it is not doing this. They will fast and worship and go and behave unjustly and sinfully as they did before. Nothing in their lives changed. They had no remorse, no sense of repentance, and no desire to change their ways. They were still self-centered, selfish and self-sufficient as they were before. Their worship was mere empty ritual. There was no substance to their fasting, their prayers, or their worship. You see, God desires us to pray. God desires us to fast. God desires us to worship. But our religious practice must translate into our daily lives. Our prayers and our fasting and our worship must impact our lives for good. Jesus said in the Gospel reading from Matthew that we must not do our piety to show off. We must not do our prayers and our fasting and our worship simply to let people know that we are really religious. Our religion must affect our lives we do not do religious duties just for the sake of doing them. They must influence how we live daily. And so in that sense, Lent is not an end in itself. It is, a, it is not a period of 40 days of fasting and prayer so that when it's over we can say, I've done it. I've done what I was supposed to do. No. It is a period section, religious piety, in order to transform us and to make us more like Jesus. So yes, fast, pray, read, meditate, or inwardly digest God's word, not just to boast that you have been able to do this, but in order for God to transform you, to transform us by His grace. So let's observe Lent with the intention of seeking God and not just seeking to get something from God. Let's observe Lent with the desire to draw nearer to God and not simply to say we have done it and pack it away. Our next song, 40 Days and 40 Nights.
from the ashes. The ashes, of course, is a symbol of our repentance. Uh, it's a symbol of our mortality. And uh, the words that we say when we when we sprinkle or make the sign of the cross of the ashes is remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. So after the prayer over the ashes, um, I'm going to make the sign of the cross on Janetta and she will do the same for me. And so let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and repentance, so that we may remember that without you we are powerless, and that only by your grace are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. So if you have a bit of ashes at home, do put it on your forehead just as a reminder as we have done here of our mortality. We are going to have the, lit the, the liturgy of penitence now, which is a series of prayers that we pray, and Janetta and I will be praying these prayers in turn. Please do join us with the words in bold type. And um, of course, I won't hear you, but uh, you can join us, of course, in these words. It's a long prayer, but it's time of penitence. It's a way to start Lent right. And you can pray these prayers every day through the 40 days of Lent. And so let us pray. Let us call to mind our sins and failures and seek the infinite mercy of God our Savior. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forebears. Neither reward us according to our sins, but spare us, good Lord. Spare your people, who you have redeemed with your most precious blood, and by your mercy, preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord, from all evil and wickedness, from pride, 
vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all evil intents of our hearts. Good Lord, deliver us. From the crafts and the swords of the evil one, from yielding to his temptations, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. From laziness, procrastination, worldliness, and love of money and power. From greed and discontentment with your daily provisions. Good Lord, deliver us. From all false teachings and divisions in your church. From hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws. From all neglect of prayer and personal piety. Good Lord, deliver us. <clears throat> From sins of our body and mind, sexual sins of lust and sinful desires. From idolatry and the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. Accept 
our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. And accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, bring, bring us with all the saints to the joy of his resurrection. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence, ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, May he accept our repentance, forgive all our sins, and restore us by the Holy Spirit to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. We are going to listen to Jesus remember.
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. So the peace be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> peace be with everybody out there. And so the Lord be always with you. <laughs> we are we are for the offering. If you have an offering, do put it aside, and we are going to give God thanks for the offering. We offer our money as a token of our lives, dedicated to Christ. We offer ourselves to be used by Him for His glory always. Amen. Um, during Lent, of course, we are uh, charity and giving and uh, sacrificial giving is part of our devotion during Lent. So, we can begin today, as shall we say, by beginning to give to God sacrificially and put aside something each day for the glory of God. And so let's say together the prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, O oh God, for your love and for all that you have done for us. Help us to do more for you and to live only and always for your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say the prayer, Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we are going to listen and sing our final hymn. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, and after that we have a final prayer and blessing for this day.
So we've come to the end of our Ash Wednesday meditation service, service of reflection, meditation, and preparing our hearts for the Lenten season. And so let us say our final prayer and blessing. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, to take up his cross, and to follow him. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain with you, and with all you love today this Lenten season and for all eternity. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks for joining us this evening. Have a blessed evening.